Fordham has lost their past few games at the Rose Hill Gym by double digits. So LaSalle came to town and Fordham was looking to turn it around. But remember this, fans, 0.7 seconds. That was the amount of time that LaSalle had to put up a shot, and it was the game winner as Fordham has now lost six in a row as they fell in this contest, 64-62. It was a design play. Um, and right before we inbounded the ball, I went back to DJ. I told him right after I set the pick, like throw the ball before I even turn around, just so we could um, catch the defense slipping. Because I knew if he waited like an extra second, the defender would have bounced back. I know that the research shows that .7 is enough time to get a shot off, and he put it up as soon as it touched his hand. So yes, I think it is. You know, everyone's going to look at the last play, but it was lost on a couple plays. You know, we let them get 13 offensive rebounds at halftime. I said, whoever controls the boards wins the game. And they had 13 offensive rebounds, and they were plus six on the backboard. So I think that was a big difference for us. Uh, you know, Duran, he's an all-conference player. He took the game over the last couple minutes for them. And, uh, you know, we missed a couple critical free throws. Uh, we shoot 11 or 15 from the foul line. It's just not good enough. Um, you know, once again, until I look at the tape, I don't know if there was 0.7 seconds left, you know, uh, but I know you can't get a shot up with 0.7 seconds. We're supposed to be taking everything away to the rim, and uh, one of the young guys didn't do that, so that's life. After Brandon Frazier made a big defensive play, the Rams thought they were going to OT for the second time this year at Rose Hill, but coach drew up a defensive set with three bigs that were going to make a play and extend the game. I was talking about getting a stop. Yeah, we, were, we, we went big. I said, you know, pinch, protect everything to the inside, make sure the pass has got to go out to the perimeter, and they take a contested shot. And then it appears one of the guys got beat on a back cut, which is baffling, but that happens. The Rams went on a 35-25 run over the last 14 minutes of the second half, and Fordham thought if there was an extra session, they would have continued to execute and win. I felt good about going into overtime because we kind of had the momentum going down the stretch here, and I felt we were going to be in good shape if we got this game in overtime. But uh, I'm not going to talk about officiating. Coach didn't, so I will. Take a look at this five-second call in the first half. Frazier is closely guarded, but creates space to get out of it. Ref doesn't think there is enough space and makes that call. I think the Zebra made a mistake right there. But there's a bigger call in this game that is on everyone's mind. After a missed three by LaSalle, Canty grabs the rebound and gets a bear hug from Wright going after the rebound. The ref calls jump ball and Fordham loses a chance to go to the free throw line and take the lead. That was a real bad call there and a mauling by the Explorers. Anyway, Fordham finally played angry and got it together today. So it really hurt not getting rewarded. Very much so. And it's a shame. It's a damn shame. It happens March 1st. You know, I thought we did some of that early in the year, and it's been gone for a while, but I thought Ryan Canty gave us great minutes. He had 11 rebounds. He had four block shots. I mean, you know, we talk about every sport being a game of inches. He blocks that last shot. All we got to do is grab it, and we go to OT. That was a great defensive possession by us. And, uh, and once again, .7 on the clock. While Canty had a great game, senior Brandon Frazier had a spectacular game with 23 points and 6 assists, leading his team back in this contest. Coach Dr. John Giannini has been with LaSalle for 10 years, and he's seen his explorers fall to Fordham in the past and credits the Rams' talent and effort in tonight's game. Well, Brandon Frazier was terrific. Um, Fordham has good talent. I know they really play with energy at home. They never quit. It was a great college basketball game. and. Again, we've lost some games like this, and now we win one. And it's not that we were a better team than Fordham today. The difference is just so tiny. But it is nice to be on the other side. There. So we're one and three now in games like this, and I'm glad it's one and three as opposed to zero and four. The reported attendance was 3,017 for the whiteout event. This team fed off the crowd late in the game, and coach was pleased with the turnout. Much better. I thought it was awesome. And I mean, we got to give out white t-shirts to get people in here. I'll buy white t-shirts for every home game. But I thought it was a good crowd and they were into it, you know, and that was big. The student body was into it. I thought it was an exciting game. And the crowd helped us play this way. And as I've said to you guys, I mean, we go on the road, we play against crowd, full houses everywhere we go. And we need to have full houses here in order to have a home court advantage. And I thought we did have a bit of a home court advantage today. And I think that helped us, especially when we went on those runs, 
the place is jumping and that's important. Coach McCord did everything he could to get a win today. And to lose this many in a row would affect many coaches around the nation. But this leader doesn't wear his struggles. Man. Look, I'm a big boy. You know, I've been through a lot more in my life, uh, life and death. I told them that too. You know, guys, this is, and I've used it a lot, this is not life and death. So this is college basketball. I'm resilient. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to build off this and turn a negative into a positive. That's my job. This is a devastating loss for Fordham because Rhode Island won today. And if Fordham would have won at URI this Wednesday, it would have made it easier to get out of the play-in game and be able to make more madness in March in Brooklyn. But now it's trying to find a way to get off from the bottom and start winning games in order to make something happen in the next few weeks. Reporting for the Rose Hill Gym, Donnie Dwyer, TheSportsCycle.com.